sometimes within a manufacturing company we'll have a product that we've created that can be further processed into two, three, four different other products that are more profitable or make more money than the previous product by itself. And of course if we make more profit or money it makes sense to further process it. Now this happens pretty frequently in processing and refining businesses. We might have an example like where we have oil, barrels of crude oil that can be further processed into things like kerosene or uh, gasoline or diesel fuel and if all of these make more income than the oil by itself they might want to further process them so they can sell these separate joint products by themselves. So we're going to be looking at these joint products and the costs used to actually create them and how we're going to allocate the costs between these new products using one of three different methods and the one we'll be going over in this presentation is the physical units method. So let's go ahead and actually bring up an illustration for you and I have an example of one where we're taking a raw material of course and splitting it into two chemicals. So of course this is called the split off point, the circle where we actually take the raw material and create two or three or four different um, joint products but in this case I've only created two and the costs associated with creating the two different chemicals are called joint costs and these include things like materials or labor or overhead so terms that you're kind of familiar with in managerial accounting at the moment and we're going to take these costs and allocate them between chemical A and B and we're going to use a method for that because if we just had one product that we processed into a new chemical if we just created one one product by itself and we had one hundred thousand dollars to process it into chemical A it would be easy to just say well the processing costs would be entirely allocated to this one new chemical but if we have two or three or four different products how are we going to how are we going to allocate it well we're going to need one of these methods so we can either use the physical method or the net realizable value method or the sales method which we'll see in a second and of course the point of why we allocate these these joint costs are because we're trying to determine inventory valuation one of two things. This is the first one. Inventory valuation because if we have a hundred thousand dollars that's being allocated some to chemical A and some to chemical B we're going to have more cost that goes into these products and when the product costs more to actually create we're actually raising the value of our our inventory or our assets. So however much maybe maybe sixty thousand goes into chemical A and 40,000 goes into chemical B. Well, the inventory value of chemical A is going to rise by 60,000 more, and the value of chemical B will rise by 40,000 more because we've allocated that cost. And the second reason we allocate costs is for income determination because the only reason what this means is we only split a raw material into two different products because each one is profitable, and if each one wasn't profitable then we wouldn't split it right so basically what we need to do is we need to make sure that we allocate the joint costs in a fair way so that each each product yields profit and if they don't we're gonna have to use a different method which we'll soon find out so let's go ahead and do the physical units method see what happens so I'm gonna delete that layer close out this one and let's bring up the question I actually should say that the three methods of course sales method net realizable value and the physical units method which we're going over right now and one important thing before we start on the question is that these two chemicals or whenever we use the physical units method you gotta make sure that the units that they're in are measured in the same unit so luckily these both of these chemicals are measured in liters so that means we can use this method. So if we had maybe a raw material like an animal being processed into uh, hamburgers and steaks or I, I don't know, 
they have to be in kilograms each or they have to be in pounds each. So you got to make sure that they are in the same units to use this method. So let's go and use this method. So since they are both in liters, we can use the physical units method. We can split the raw material into chemical A and B, which we've seen the joint cost is $100,000. So our joint cost is $100,000 which means $100,000 to produce these two units. Production is 100,000 liters of A, 50,000 liters of B, and we can sell them for 90 cents a liter of A and 60 cents a liter for B. How are we going to do this? So we need to allocate $100,000 between these two. So first of all, we're going to take, we're going to take 100,000 liters, and that is for A, and we're going to have 50,000 liters of B when we create these, or when we actually separate them into these two different products. So we'll have 150,000 liters of both. Now, the way we're actually going to separate the $100,000 between two products is to get a percent so that we can allocate a percent to chemical A and chemical B. So we're going to do something called prorate this $100,000. So we're going to take 100,000 of the liters divided by the total 150 and we're going to take B which is 50,000 liters divided by the total liters and that way each will give us a percent. So chemical A will take that will be 66.67 percent while chemical B will be 33.33 percent. So 33.33 of the 100,000 is going to go to chemical B and the opposite for chemical A. So let's actually do this and what's going to happen is if we multiply it of course 66.67 is going to be 66,667 dollars of cost that's going to go into chemical A while $33,333 is going to go into the cost of B. So what has just happened is we've increased the value of the inventory of A by 66,667 and the value of B by 33,333. So now if we actually look at how much the make, so let's let's get rid of this prorated stuff here up at the top. Now let's say we know that they make uh, 90 cents a liter and we made 100,000 so chemical A is going to yield $900,000 of revenue while the cost is going to be the cost is going to be 66,667 and that's going to be for product A. Now product B is going to have 60 cents a liter at 50,000 liters. I think that's $30,000 in revenue and that will be 33,333 for the allocated expense or the the joint cost expense allocated to B. So in total what is that going to yield in profit for each of these? Well, for A, that'll be about, what, 23,000, let's see, 90,000 minus 66667, 23,333, which is fine. And the other one will actually yield a, a loss of 3,000, 333 but this can't be because if we're splitting them into chemical A and B they each have to make a profit so obviously this method is not the right one to use because we need to make sure that they each yield a profit so this isn't a good way to actually allocate the cost we're gonna have to use one of the two different methods and we'll go over this exact same example but we'll do it for the sales method and the net realizable value method to make sure that product A and product B both yield a certain amount of profit because they have to yield profit. So 
that is how we do the physical units method. We'll talk about the, the, the next method, which is the sales method, in the next video. Hopefully you understand it, and I'll see you in the next one. If you have any questions regarding accounting or any other material within our videos, you can tweet us at NotePirate, you can like us on Facebook to receive updates, or to share any quick anecdotes about how our videos might have helped. And like always, thanks for watching us on YouTube.